okay so i got the secondary air distribution tube off finally it was a huge pain in the ass and i ended up breaking the nipple on this end so i'm going to try to buy this piece it's about 90 bucks if not i will try to glue the nipple back on and go from there but now i can get the plugs out have it so the old plug which by the way had 50,000 miles on it um, is gapped at about uh, 0.95 or so it's supposed to be at 0.8 so they definitely have uh, worn over time uh, boy I tell you what it uh, it ran great even though the uh, gap was getting large can't wait to see how it runs with the new plugs with a light coating of anti-seize on the spark plugs. We'll go ahead and install this one and then torque it to 106 inch pounds, which is 12 Newton meters. Of course, why would you do one project when you can do three or four? So I finally have the plugs changed and back in. Um, now I've got to work on a couple of other things before I put that back together. But a little while ago, I installed a hex easy can to run some of the electronics because this was getting to be a bit much. Um, this is actually a huge improvement over the way it was. <clears throat> Jay's helping out here. But so they came up with a new uh, software update so and firmware update so I took care of that we've taken um, the laptop out plugged it in got that all taken care of and the bike's got 52,000 miles on it and it's got the original air filter in it as well so we are going to take the rest of the plastic off and uh, just to get into this area here which is where the air filter is we're gonna do that real quick um, this shouldn't take a huge amount of time a couple of screws here, a couple of screws here. These pieces just slide back and off. Then these pieces with these additional bolts out will slide back and off and that will allow me to get to the air filter. We're going to change that here in just a minute. But first, we've got to get the bodywork off. With these screws out, this just pulls back. And up. Let me see if I can get this like that. <clears throat> so this now allows us to get to this screw and with this screw out and then this piece will just slide out. Now with the top screw out this piece just lifts up in the back and slides out. The key is when we put this back in here there's that little grommet right there, and that piece has to slide in there like that. When that happens, then everything else lines up. But so now we've got one side off, we'll do the other side, then we'll take a couple more screws off, and that will let the center piece come out. Well, I've got all the screws out to get the center console, this center console piece out. But apparently it is held in by the gas cap. One more step. One of the things that I have learned is that if a bolt is going to jump somewhere, it's going to jump somewhere inconvenient. So I've just stuck a little bit of a paper towel here and now we can take these three bolts out and get the entire gas cap assembly off the bike. With the three black screws out of the way, this piece just lifts off. Of course it doesn't. Oh, forgot a screw, that's why. <laughs> With the four mounting screws out, this just lifts out. With the final retaining bolts out and the gas cap removed and all the other screws out, this piece just removes 
exposing the opening for the new air filter. Now with the th three screws out, we can lift this up. We'll pull this filter out, put the new one in, and start the reassembly process. Now this filter has 52,000 miles on it. It's a little dirty, but by God, that's not bad at all. I'm impressed. The k n truly will be a million mile filter. In order to do the projects that I've done today, this is all the stuff you have to take off the bike. It's just, it's a little disconcerting to realize that I've got to figure out where every one of these pieces and screws goes to get this thing back on the road. Luckily, I've been taking videos. I think I'm up to the task. Okay, I've got the gas cap back on. Got the binding screws for this centerpiece back on. Next are the what to do with them? Yes. Next are the side panels. And then these guys. Of course, we are totally blaming Jay for this, but when we were, were removing these grommets uh, from the bike, and this is the air distribution tube that goes on the top of the valve cover, we managed to break this nipple off. And uh, I did finally get the piece out. It was a real pain in the butt. But this piece is $86 plus shipping plus tax, so it's going to be 100 bucks to replace. So I tried the super glue and baking soda trick, and it seems to have turned this um, into a very, very hard substance, which is what it's supposed to do. So we're going to put this back on the bike and give it a whirl before we spend 100 bucks on a little piece of plastic. Because these nipples were so hard to get out of here, we're just going to put just a little bit of grease around those rubber nipples to make them slide in a little easier. And then we're going to heat the whole mess with a hairdryer to make it a little more pliable. And then hopefully we can reinstall this to those three ports without breaking that nipple off again. <laughs> Wish me luck. So the outer two positions went in really easily. This is just a tire changing spoon. And to get the center one in, I just pry it in here just gently and that slid right in. This is how I got these out as well. Get it under here and then just pry it out. It took a lot of force to get them out, but now that they're greased, if I ever have to do this again, and I hope that's not the case, they should be much easier to get out. With just a touch of grease on the nipple, that hose slid right on there. I think I'm going to get a little bit of tape and reinforce this connection just to make sure that it doesn't vibrate over time, but so far, it looks pretty stable. So I went ahead and wrapped that really tightly with electrical tape, and as you can see, I added a couple of paper clips just for additional stiffness. That may or may not be complete overkill, but I figured I really don't want to do this again. The next step is to replace the radiator, and I spent quite a bit of time cleaning. I'm hoping you can see this, but it is much, much cleaner than it was. Uh, you could hardly see through this thing, especially down by the end, by the bottom. This is where the tire guard is, and that was almost completely blocked. I'm hoping now that with this being clean, that that takes care of my overheating problem. The next step is to remount the radiator fan. This is the electrical plug for the fan, and it's at a 45 degree angle, so it just slips in here this and then clicks in place. One of the things I can't stand are these spring pliers because they invariably are impossible to remove and they can jump and disappear so I usually replace them with standard hose clamps and then when I'm done 
I'll bend the end to make sure that that hose clamp won't loosen up on its own. One of the things that's really important is that this small hose that goes to the top of the thermostat gets put back on that clip on the top of the radiator fan. Otherwise, that hose will hit the exhaust pipes and it will melt and that would be bad. So make sure that you get that hose clipped back in there properly and securely. When reassembling, always look to make sure that you are doing things in the proper order. Now these used to be flush out here, not back that far. And that is because I forgot to put this piece in there. So now I've got to take all that out again. With this piece properly installed, we can now reinstall the radiator. And you can tell that this piece goes this direction because there are these little rubber tabs and they fit right there. You can see the outline of that circle. Just like that. Now I can put the radiator back on. The next step is to reinstall the radiator retaining clips. The washer goes on here and then this clip just slides up in here like that. Next is the radiator guard with these two screws here and then this is the whole guide the whole guard rather and that will come up and attach over the top. Before we reinstall this piece with the fog lights, I did want to address how dirty the oil cooler is. So I've sprayed it with hydrogen peroxide that will help uh, dissolve the bug guts. And then we'll hit it with simple green and then we'll hit it with a hose. And that should help. So we finally got the bike back together. Uh, sorry the battery died during that process, but that's just a matter of putting the body panels back on. And watch the disassembly video if you need some help with what goes where. But uh, got the bodywork all back on, got the radiator on the oil cooler cleaned, and today went out for a pretty good ride. Just spent a good portion of the morning on the bike, and temperatures hit 98 degrees coming home in the interstate. And normally the bike has been running a couple of bars above the midline, which is where it should be, which is why I got concerned, because I knew it was, getting, it was going to be a problem when it got this warm. Uh, today I had no trouble, could run the bike as hard as I wanted, even in 98 degree weather. So the uh, cleaning of the radiator made a huge difference, which is good news, because I am sure that curved radiator from BMW would not be cheap. So the next project, I think, is going to be taking the bike to the dark side. Stay tuned.